So Night Stalker and Night Strangler were two uh, popular and successful TV movies for the character of Carl Kulshak. And they were going to follow it up with a third one called Night Killer. Uh, that was going to take place in Hawaii, which is interesting because in, in the first two movies, he's, Carl is trying to get to New York uh, and uh, still would not have gone there. Uh, they were going to New York at the end, and I say they. Uh, he and Vincenzo was going with him this time, and uh, the belly dancer girl was accompanying them. <laughs> Uh, but when they decided to scrap a third movie and go into a TV series, uh, the setting becomes Chicago. And I don't recall much mention of how or why, and maybe it was a brief bit of dialogue that I missed, uh, or another episode. But anyway, uh, and Belly Dancer Girl's not around, so maybe she made it <laughs> to New York and they didn't. <laughs> but anyway, that, that becomes the setting for all the other shows. So... Uh, both of the TV movies had all this creepy uh, and spooky atmosphere about it, as one would expect for this horror-related uh, genre. And uh, But the weakest part about them, uh, both are cool, and uh, of course, with the charm of Kulshak himself, uh, and nobody liking him in, the, in a lot of the templates you can expect, uh, nobody believes him, and the ones that know that he's telling the truth don't like him, and they cover it up anyway. <laughs> And that sort of thing, you can expect that all the time. Uh, but one of the weaknesses is that the villains or monsters in, in those two were, were very similar. The first, right off the bat, a, right off the bat, yes, a vampire. And, and then the next one, well, it's another immortal who has to kill people to maintain his immortality. <laughs> but it's some mad scientist from the Civil War era who discovered the elixir of life and that sort of thing. So a, a different way of doing it, but ultimately it's kind of the same thing. There's these series of murders. Oh, what is this? And uh, the main suspect uh, overpowers the police single-handedly and all this type of thing. Uh, and there's some differences here and there. And, of course, there were some interesting characters along the way that were really kind of comical here and there and that sort of thing and, and all of that, even though quite a few of them became victims uh, of, the, of the villain. Um, it's like, well, you know, you need to go into some other direction. So you're going to have a TV series. Surely that's what they'll do. Nope. <laughs> uh, the first episode called The Ripper. Uh, because there's a series of murders in Chicago that are very reminiscent of the Jack the Ripper killings uh, in the late uh, 1800s. <laughs> so you can guess, hey, who's committing these crimes? Well, yeah, it's Jack the Ripper committing the crime <laughs> because he's some sort of supernatural creature. It's never really, at least I didn't get it. Uh, determined as to what he was and how he was able to do this. At least the other two, you know, there was an explanation. Um, uh, here, uh, and, 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 and when he keeps killing these women, is he doing it for some way to preserve himself or whatnot, you know? Uh, but once again, he possesses superhuman strength uh, akin to the vampire and, you know, the other, uh, the, the, the old doctor. And, uh, but really no explanation for it. Uh, uh, but it, so it, it, like, there's pretty much the same, you know, uh, paint by number type approach to this that's very similar to the first two movies. And that's the weakest point uh, to it is like, gee, the third time. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think that's what the third movie would have been. I forget exactly. I think it was going to, yeah, it was going to involve aliens and androids and stuff. But anyway, uh, the usual rigorum are all of, you know, no one believes him. He's not supposed to be on the story. You get introduced to another member of the cast who is this rather, you know, foppish, <laughs> swishy guy reporter <laughs> who's really not cut out for these type of stories. But he gets the story much to uh, Carl's chagrin. Vincenzo assigns him to uh, answer, uh, you know, letters to the editor, of, you know, sort of like a... a you know, and land. What, what was the, you know, damn it, I'm already forgetting. But, you know, people would ask questions about their relationships and stuff like that. And uh, he was supposed to <laughs> answer those. And uh, as it turns out, of course, this 
these letters give him a clue. There's some nosy, gossipy lady writing in about this deranged-looking man that she's scared of, and you know he brings people to the, to his decrepit old house, but he never sees them leave, only him, and that kind of thing. So of course it's it's the killer. So of course Carl, you know, gets there. But in the meantime. He's not really interested in any of that. He keeps trying to pursue this story that uh, Updike's the guy's name and he's supposed to be doing it. Carl, of course, doesn't like him, so he calls him Uptight. <laughs> but the guy is like, oh, no, he's about to vomit at the sight of all this stuff. He's really not cut out for it and all that. But whatever, Kolchak pursues the, the case. And uh, once again, uh, not belly dancers, but they sure dress like them, but it's a massage parlor. <laughs> and Kolchak uh, believes that uh, the Ripper will attack that place uh, uh, once before he'd already had. And he goes in there and tells the girls, that, hey, I don't really want a massage. I just want to hide in the closet so I can watch. <laughs> Turns out she's an undercover cop. <laughs> He gets busted, and the cops don't like him. He's already got the reputation. Of, oh well, look who's here, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, with things like that, and it is, it's all rather silly. Uh, it kind of saves it from itself, even though it's gotten, you know, too repetitive already out the gate uh, from the other two movies. Granted, perhaps at at the time you could work it into thinking is. You know, not everybody saw the first two movies, <laughs> and the episode might have been their first uh, introduction uh, to the character and the stories and all that. So, it, I will say that the Ripper had a had a cooler outfit than the vampire and the other guy. Uh, yeah, he had the opera cape and everything because you know the myth of Jack the Ripper is he uh, he dressed like that. I don't know why he would still be dressing like that all those years later, but you know. Uh, but of course, it was just a myth. Uh, the real killer, and uh, no, he just did not dress like that. <laughs> but nevertheless, for the theatrics of of a fantastic show and all that sort of thing, uh, well, it's fine. So of course, uh, with the gossipy old lady's letter, uh, Kolchak interviews her uh, and finds uh, what he uh, believes is the home of the killer. Of course, it is. And uh, in the meantime, he's witnessed, very similar to the other two movies, <laughs> the police engaging this guy, and they fight with him, they shoot him, and nothing works. Uh, so Kolchak uh, realizes, man, what's it going to take to take this guy down? And so he sets up a trap uh, at the house, uh, but he's snooping around in it, and then suddenly the guy comes home, and it's very similar once again. Uh, to the vampire episode but this time uh, Kolchak loses it he's hiding in the guy's closet River doesn't even know he's there he's kind of suspicious but he never sees him he's putting his cape up <laughs> and Kolchak screams and then he's trying to get away and he's clumsy but actually his clumsiness probably saves him as he falls down the stairs and all this stuff and uh, also in the story there was another uh, reporter lady uh, who was also chasing this case and decided to put herself out as bait and he was warning her not to do it uh, but she wouldn't listen she bought a revolver and thought yeah she'll be all right well carl finds her dead body at the house so it didn't turn out so great in the vampire story he was able to save the victim who was you know trapped there uh but he you know also oh well he couldn't save the girl this time but uh, the killer is pursuing him so he leads him to the trap he set which is basically he got these uh, you know, electrical wires, hooked it up to the fuse box, and uh, led it into this pond where the water would conduct the electricity. Uh, the ripper goes in and is electrocuted, and then uh, it completely disintegrates him. And all that's left is uh, his clothes. The police take those, but Kolchak manages to get one of his shoes, uh, researches it, tracks it down to uh, you know a, a shoe company out of London <laughs> and they say yeah that's one of our shoes but we don't make those anymore <laughs> of course it's, it's the real thing it's a, it's an old shoe from from way back when uh, and and all that but in spite of that he really has no evidence to make his case 
and he just throws the story in the trash, chuckles, and leaves. So he doesn't end with his life completely destroyed, even though the possibility was there because the police, as far as they're concerned, he committed arson and all this stuff. Um, but probably having witnessed a lot of this, they realize, some of them anyway, that, well, we can just move on. We don't want to speak to this supernatural perpetrator or what have you. And that sort of thing. So unlike the movies, he's not run out of town or anything. He just doesn't have a story, you know. And uh, I, I guess he could write up a story about one of the the gossipy lady who wrote the letter to the editor, <laughs> and uh, to say, "Oh, well, the house caught on fire next door," <laughs> and leave it at that. Um, but that such is the lot in life for Carl. Kolchak, you know, he experiences all these bizarre supernatural happenings, but no one, at least almost no one, will ever believe uh, it happened at all. So, but anyway, uh, in spite of the repetition, which of course I've bemoaned in other reviews on shows, but a lot of it is because it's flat out and complete, top to bottom, total rep repetition. Yeah, you know. that's not really the case here. Uh, because it's saved by the charm of the show, uh, the, the performance of Darren McGavin's Top Notch, and the extra elements they threw in, uh, you know, saves it, really. Uh, and so its weaknesses doesn't ruin it for me. Uh, I'm still enjoying the show. And, of course, you know, I'm biased. I mean, this goes back to my childhood. I you know, loved the show. Uh, wish there could have been more, even if they kind of did the same thing. <laughs> but uh, for the next episode, it's a very different uh, uh, creature uh, that he has to deal with. And uh, they do expand on the possibilities in uh, later episodes. Not just another guy in a black cloak who uh, kills girls. You know? <laughs> it's, not <laughs> it's not always the case. For Kolshak, the Night Stalker. <laughs>